we're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going. We're recovering, but to a different economy, and it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for for many workers. In Silicon Valley, and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their home countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. Oh, that graphic is good. Big Brother Mailman. But it's real, it turns out. Postal Service not just delivering the mail, also spying on you. True story. Fox's Trace Gallagher has the details for us tonight. Hey, Trace. And Tucker, legal experts are baffled for two reasons. One, because by surveilling American social media accounts, the U.S. Postal Service is monitoring lawfully protected speech, which of course raises constitutional concerns. And two, if Big Brother Mailman is looking for criminal activity, that would normally be the FBI's job, right? And yet, according to a memo obtained by Yahoo News, the U.S. Postal Inspection Service, which by the way is the law enforcement arm of the USPS, is running what it calls the Internet Covert operations program or ICOP and the primary objective appears to be collecting data about planned protests in the document obtained by Yahoo Big Brother mailman was looking for inflammatory posts about the worldwide rally for freedom held back in March that's where thousands of people around the world protested COVID lockdowns but instead of looking for potential nefarious behavior across the board the main surveillance was of Facebook and quote right-wing leaning parlor and telegram and the memo did mention the right-wing proud boys and said without citing intelligence that some people on parlor intended to quote do serious damage but there was no mention of any left-wing groups like antifa surprising considering the lion's share of the protest violence over the past year has been caused by left-wing groups. Incidentally, the worldwide freedom rally did spark violence in some countries, but none that we could find in this country. Tucker. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And we have the United States Postal Service spying on social media. And this definitely should not surprise you. Now, guys, we know when it comes to social media, detectives don't even have to leave the office anymore. We see people post things that are just absolutely ridiculous. And we see our government is going to take full advantage. And then also, guys, we have Trump definitely talking about 2024 comeback. And we know it's going to happen some way, some form. They are going to ride the Hegelian dialectic for the next four years. And we know by that time, the fourth industrial revolution will be halfway built. Because we know when it comes to the new world order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. And how seriously are you considering running again in 2024? I miss the most helping people because I can directly help people. That's why I did it. I, look, this has been a very traumatic. I had a great life, great company, great business, no problems. And now all I do is people go after you. It's, it's vicious. It's horrible. But you know what? I love doing it because I help people. And I've helped them more than any president with the cutting of taxes, with the regulations, with uh, right to try. You're proud you know of how big right to try is? Huge. Where you don't have to travel to all sorts of different continents to try and get something. We have the greatest doctors in the world, greatest labs. We can use their medicines now. If somebody's terminally ill, 
They can sign a quick little document. You can use Medicare, and, and that's had a huge thing. What are you but most proud of, though? A lot of things. Uh, I'm very proud of the tax cuts. I hope they don't screw it up because the jobs. Yeah. You know, we brought back a screw record. I think so. We brought back a record. Well, it's still not going to be as high as it was. You know, it was really 39 percent. Right. So it looks like it could be a 25 percent. I brought it down to 21. But I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of the. And, and very importantly, the regulation cuts. I'm very proud of what I did for the military. I've rebuilt the military, and I've added something called Space Force. It's going to be so powerful, so important. So I've added another, think of it, I've added to the military. It hasn't happened since, I guess, 75 years since the Air Force. And the economy pre-COVID, record low unemployment We had the greatest numbers in the history of the world. We had the greatest economy in history world. We had the greatest economy. We had the greatest job numbers. We had the great. We we're up to 160 million people. We were never even close to that. Mm -hmm. And if you think of it, I did it twice. Because then the whole world went down. We've come back stronger than any other country in the world. You know, they used to hit me with Germany and France and this and that. Well, they're doing terribly right now. They're all locked down. It's a disaster. They're having riots on their streets. This country is coming back strong. And it's very interesting. Uh, places like Florida and Texas and many others, I mean, I could name many others, uh, I think in almost all cases run by Republicans. I think in all cases. But they've done so well. And you look, I saw the other day Michigan. I would say there's been nothing as close, other than for her husband, who was, you know, had free run of the place. I don't think that there's been any state more locked up than Michigan. Are you running again in 2024? What, what, what are the odds? If I were to First ask... of all, it's a long time. The odds, the odds. What are the odds? Look. The odds. I got tremendous yeah. numbers. Nobody's ever gotten the numbers I got. No sitting presidents come even close. There's more popularity now than there was the day before the election because they see how bad things are at the border. They see what's going on. They see that their guns are going to be gone, their Second Amendment, their taxes are going up, regulations are going through the roof, jobs are going to go out. What well, do you see? You know, this is going to take a little while to show. But if they add all these regulations back, the jobs are going to be gone. Your energy independence is going to be gone. So I, I say this. I, I am looking at it very seriously beyond seriously. Uh, from a legal standpoint, I don't want to really talk about it yet. It's a little too if soon. If you did run and did win, what would you do differently? Um, when I came in, we were hit with phony Russia, Russia, Russia investigations. It was a total phony deal. That was three years of your no, presidency. No. I've, been, I've been fighting off investigations for five years. I mean, really, since the almost the day that we came down. And they were corrupt, Democrat-inspired. I still have it. They were Democrat-inspired investigations. Russia, I remember, Sean, and I don't have too much time, I guess, with you, but a story I think it's interesting. I haven't told it before. Uh, during the campaign in 2016, I'd be asked, like, by one of our aides, sir, do you have anything to do with Russia? i say, no, no. That would be it. Then, a month later, somebody would say, what do you know about Russia? I said, no, what? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I wouldn't think of it. Then after three or four or five times, people would say, do you know anything about Russia? I kept saying, huh. So after three or four times, I said, what's going on with Russia? They created a phony deal. It was paid for by Hillary, crooked Hillary Clinton. They made a phony Russian disinformation dossier. Destroyed. Oh, and years. they used it to spy right. on you as a candidate, Correct. your transition team, and while you were president. It says at the top of a FISA warrant, verified. It was unverifiable, and they knew it. 17 times. They knew it right from the get-go. They knew it, they were warned beforehand, and they knew it certainly from Christopher Steele and the subsource by it January. It was a total fraud. Yeah. And you know what it did? It hurt any possibility of dealing with Russia. We could have, we could have had a good... Look, they'll say, oh, he loves Russia. Getting along with Russia is a good thing, not a bad thing. Getting along with China is a good thing. The problem we had with China was COVID, because nobody ever took out so much money from China. You know, if you look at China, I was taking tens of billions of dollars of tariffs from China, and our farmers were doing great. The reason they were doing great was because of the tariffs I was able to sign 
a great deal for our farmers. But getting along with these countries, getting along with Kim Jong-un of North Korea, when I came in, President Obama said, and I think this is very public, it's going to, the biggest problem we have is North Korea, there's going to be a war. There was no war. We got along great. He I writes me letters. I like him. He likes me. There's nothing wrong with that. I got along great with President Putin. I liked him. He liked me. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. They made up this phony hoax just recently, which came out two days ago, that it was a total phony Russian. It was a big deal, deal in the campaign. No, but you know what it does? It keeps you away from these countries, from dealing economically. We could have made a lot of money. They have great natural resources. We could have made a lot of money and done well in jobs and everything else. Mm -hmm. Getting along with Russia is a good thing. Getting along with these countries is a good thing, not a bad thing. If I were going to bet, there's probably a lineup now. It sounds like you're running. It sounds like you haven't lost any engagement. You've been very